Hey, what's up, guys? Shakes on Betty here. Another week, another episode. Orlando Pirates lost the final. Baroka relegated. Others one has come out again with comments. And we look at the PSL Award nominees. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. <laughs> you know it's me. So let's kick things off with the CAF Conversions Cup final, which was Orlando Pirates featuring against Pekan and Orlando Pirates losing that crucial final on penalties. And have you ever watched a game where you thought to yourself within the first 15 minutes of that game, Orlando Pirates will kick themselves if they don't win this? You know, and I've already spoken about the magnitude of this tournament and how serious you see other teams taking it as well. Bekan winning it again within three years. And that's how seriously teams within the North Africa take this competition. And Orlando Pirates had a lot of the ball, control position, even created a lot of chances, but they were not simply taking them. I remember Hoto having to go one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and you thought to yourself, if it just doesn't happen for them, to be at this final, because the last time they were at a final was in 2015. So that was seven years ago. And they could find themselves having to wait another seven years before they reached the final. And I got to give credit to Bacan because these teams that compete a lot within these competitions, these calf competitions, they just know how to win them. There was a period within the game, especially within the second half, that I saw that Bacan knew that Orlando Pirates was just faster than them was stronger than them, you know, had more intensity than them. And they dropped it down. They played more on the defensive, trying to get it to extra time. And they always had to wait for that particular opportunity that was going to come. And eventually they got the penalty. And Orlando Pirates getting a lifeline again with the goal from Lodge, even the way that it went in, nobody really knows how it went in. And it was down to penalties. And we've seen Orlando Pirates in previous penalty shootouts. They've just not been able to win it, but they lost it. And Bagan winning it again, having to make that history. And now Orlando Pirates find themselves sitting in a situation is where to from here? Because domestically it was so poor that they had to win this. And especially for the coaches. And I'm coming on to them now. Manjik Nkazi and Fadlu Davids. On to them. They had to win this trophy. I posted on my socials in terms of them having to win it in order to stand a chance to be part of next season with Orlando Pirates and with the way that the campaign has gone. The nine draws within 27 games within the league. I mean, as poor as that. And they've got games that's coming throughout this week and they have to win all of them in order to sort of qualify for CAF again. But knowing Orlando Pirates, you just feel as though you can't necessarily trust them. I've spoken about not being able to trust them. And I looked at even some of the frontline players that Manjing Gazen as well as Fadlu Davis had. And I thought to myself, I looked at these players. These are players that have played 10 or less games. And you think to yourself, did they rotate enough? Did they rotate enough? Look, Lepasa obviously had that long-term injury. Mango, on the other hand, had a brilliant AFCON campaign, came back and was not being able to get games. And they carried on with the front line that was very similar, that was not getting goals. And when you look at the front line players that they have, they should be able to mix it around. Eusta as well, who's able to get up and down the right-hand side and provide those assists. He, was he used enough? I mean, he only had less than 10 games with, throughout the season. You also have Kwanda, Ngomnyama as well. Why did he come to Orlando Pirates if he's not going to be used? Because with the number of games that were played and the tournaments that Orlando Pirates was in, that rotation was needed. Radio Pane, scoring goals at the Disky, the Disky Challenge. Scoring goals for Orlando Pirates. He was top goal scorer within that tournament. Young, fresh, should have been used more. Kolani as well. And then also Nkanyu Suzungo too. You've seen him on social being able to post in terms of he's going to wait for his chance. And I spoke again, 28 goals within 27 games. It's just not good enough, especially when you have that front line that Orlando Pirates have. Now, I've spoken about the coaches. And funny enough, I don't think it's just the coaches that possibly need to take blame for, for how the season has gone for Orlando Pirates. I think Orlando Pirates, the one thing that sort of bothers me as well with the players too, is every single time they come to a new club, they don't seem to excel or they don't seem to get better. Whereas when you look on the other side, Mamelodi Sanos, for example, they are capable of having to bring in players and for some reason they get better. You know, Grant Kekana will play better. You know, Lungu will play better. 
You know, they're just able, Rolani will come and he'll play better as well. But you look at Orlando Pirates, you know, Makaringe, is Makaringe the player that he was at Maritzburg United? You know, is Sipasilia Njovu the player that he was at Maritzburg United? You just look at all these players and you think to yourself, have they gotten better? Tsehofato Mabasa, there was at a point where you thought this is the number nine to take them forward. And now you think to yourself that should Orlando Pirates be able to get better out of these players or should the players also take blame for how their season have gone? I mean, some of them have not had great statistics, but you'll find them on social media. You'll find them on social media. And I don't know if that is a great thing. And maybe they need a new voice. Some would say they need a new voice, but some would also say Orlando Pirates haven't had their return on investment with regards to the players that have come in. Players are regressing. Sundowns is getting better. The philosophy as well really needs to be worked on too. And I think even the players, I'm speaking to them, they need to demand more from themselves. They need to. And now next season, there have been talks that Tabel Koki is coming from... Amazulu, already they've got a number of centre-backs that's within the squad. Over six centre-backs. You can't have that many. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, is that I feel like that needs to be trimmed down. I would understand if he's coming in. I think he's a quality player. It's only rumours as it is right now, but it's strong rumours that he's potentially going to be going there. And I think he's been a stalwart for Amazulu. But if he goes there, you can't have six centre-backs that are going to be at the club. And then as well as there's evidence Mahopa, who's also linked to Orlando Pirates, who I think has not had a great season at Baraka, still young, part of the Bafana squad. I think he's going to be able to score goals at Orlando Pirates with the chances that they create. They create a lot of chances. And I think he should be someone that should be able to lead the line. Radio Pane as well. He needs to be given first team opportunities. But now with those two who are 22 years old and younger, or 23, what happens to the other players? Maybe they need new environments, but for the coach and the players, I think they need a serious look within the mirror. So let's bring it back home. DSTV Premiership, uh, Baroka relegated, unfortunately, um, through to the fixtures over the weekend. We're not able to beat Maritzburg United. What a club it's been within the DSTV Premiership, within the top league of South African football, founded in 2007, um, were promoted in the 2015-2016 season. And they also won that Telcom knockout within 2018, making that historic victory over Orlando Pirates. Now, I asked myself in terms of where did it go wrong for Baraka? And I have to say that I think the chairman has to probably take a little bit of blame in terms of the coaching department that was hired. I think he gave Tobajana a chance. And obviously, Tobajana has got history with the club as well. Matsumela Toka was replaced. But when Tobajana came in, I think that's when you started to see that things were just not right. The team was leaking goals. I've got even numbers for you. Um, as you can see on screen, 16 games played, 10 losses within those 16 games, and have conceded 27 goals. They were very leaky and the very big game was that Swallows one where they took a 2-0 lead and then they still managed to lose the game 3-2 because they were not able to manage the game. And I think what kind of showed was immediately Vincent Kowala comes in and he's appointed the head coach. And from then on, you just see a team with more structure, a team that is able to concede less goals, a team that's able to score goals as well. There was just built, they were more solid with regards to Vincent Cowell, and it's so unfortunate that they went down on the last game. But he had four games, he won two of them as well. And I think if they keep him, if they keep him, I think they should be able to come back. And I'm very positive about Baraka because they're a club that always gives chances. They're a club that you always get to meet new players through that club, youngsters as well, within Lombopo as well. So I think... They go back down and it's hard to come back up. But because they're not always known for buying big name players, I think they should be able to get back and provide it if they stay with Vincent Kovola because he did provide that structure. And I wish him all the best and I wish that he does take them forward within the Glad Africa Championship. So in the DSTV Premiership, we had also another big game as well. It was Kansas Chiefs going up against Swallows. For both teams, it really meant a lot. I mean, Chiefs needed to win in order to try and be within CAF next season. And as for Swallows, they needed points because they were trying to retain the status. And the game ended 2 all. It was a very interesting game. I think Swallows as well will be kicking themselves in terms of the number of chances that they created. And they were not able to see the game out, considering the fact that Kansas Chiefs were down to 10 men. But they survived by the skin of their teeth. 
they finished 15th because TS Galaxy won their game. So regardless if they won against Chiefs, they were going to finish 15th. The most important thing is they didn't get into that 16th position, which Barocca is in. So that takes them to the relegation playoffs where they'll be playing against Tux and as well as Cape Town All-Stars who finished second and third within the Glad Africa Championship. So it's going to be three teams playing against each other, home and away, and let's see who gets the most points. The plus side for Swallows is the fact that when you look at the last five seasons, other than one of the teams that was playing their trade in the top division have not gone down. So Chipa stayed up, Black Leopard stayed up, Maritzburg United stayed up, and Barocca as well stayed up. So in that omen, you sort of feel like because of the quality within that league, they're probably much better than the team, the, te the two teams coming from the Glad Africa Championship. But my biggest worry about Swallows, and especially what I've seen, throughout the campaign in these last few games is they're creating chances, but they're not taking them. And I do also feel as though there needs to be a level of hunger that you got to have when you play these relegation playoffs because you have teams in the Glad Africa Championship that are desperate to come into the top division. So Swallows really need to up their game. They really need to up the game because this is not going to be a chief scenario where you create all these chances and you're not taking them. Because if you will be kept, you you will get punished. I must add, you will get punished. And I do think that they need to up their game from a hunger perspective, where they're able to put chances away. Because remember what happened in 2014 and 2015 season? Swallows found themselves, or Morocco Swallows found themselves in the relegation playoffs, and unfortunately they went down. So Swallows, let's get that hunger up. So we've seen the Swallows' perspective. Now, the Kaiser Chiefs perspective now. They drew at home. They've not been able to get wins at home. And unfortunately, they will not be playing their trade within the CAF competitions next season. And I think obviously they have themselves to blame in terms of I think the planning towards the season was not necessarily great. But we need to talk about what Atazwani said after the game. Again, he came out with comments, um, comments that we've heard before, but... This is what he said, because I want you to hear in terms of what he said. It's not me. I think it's there for everyone to see. I can say things that people might see differently, and they would think maybe I know too much, or maybe I'm harsh on players. But the reality is, we know we didn't have good enough players to play for this club. We had players, yes, that could play for this club, but not good enough we can't keep on repeating the same mistakes. I have asked it earlier on. Are we improving? Now it kills coaches as if coaches are not preparing the players. So obviously, those are the things that talk to us as a club as to going forward, who should be part of the team and who should not be part of the team. We are going to be realistic on that. I think we have been nursing some players' feelings far too long now. Some things have to change. So those were the comments of Atazwan. And I say we've heard it before because he's obviously critiqued in terms of the club needs to change personnel and it needs to get better. The reason why I bring this up again, um, and it's recent comments, firstly, that's the reason why I bring it up again. But I ask myself in terms of, why does he keep on repeating it? I think everybody knows that the club needs to change and they need to change personnel and they need to move forward. And the philosophy has to come back. So he's almost saying things that we've heard before of him say. So the first time he said it was like, okay, it was a great moment to probably hear a coach who knows the club within and out and being able to say what, need, what changes are needed at the club. But when he keeps on repeating it, I think what does it do to the relationship of him and as well as the players that are still within the club? I also think about, because I personally want him to have a chance. I really do want Atazan to have a chance at this job because of just he's able to know the club and he's been part of the fabric as well. But when he keeps on saying it all the time, I, I, I question in terms of, is it does he know that maybe he's not going to be given the opportunity? You know? So... It's a little bit worrying, and I think the positive side is the season has come to an end. So I'm not, I don't think we're going to be having more press conferences of KZ Chiefs games. So it's off to management now. And that's my point. It's, it's off to management now. The management have to act. And if they do not act right, 
then we <laughs> the uproar can come up again, which is fine. But for now, let's let's see what management do. And that's the most important thing that I wanted to say to others right now. I think we've heard it before. And let's see what management does. Match week 30 within the DST Premiership came over this weekend, but it's not over yet. There's still fixtures that are going to come through. Orlando Pirates still need to play. Royal AM still need to play. Super Sports still need to play. Arrows need to play. Amazulu need to play. Now, as you can see on screen, there's so much that is happening throughout this week because we've got teams that are fighting for CAF positions and we've got two teams that are fighting for the top eight. So this is just for you to look at and be able to see that the DSTV Premiership action is not over just yet. I'm looking forward to these games and let's see what happens. And lastly, I want to say congratulations to Cape Town City for guaranteeing themselves CAF football next season. Now we wait to see whether it's going to be the Confederations Cup or it's going to be the Champions League. And that solely depends on Orlando Pirates and Royal AM. Let's see what happens. PSL Awards. That's the agenda right now. So the nominees came out this week and it was great to see. I mean, this is the moment that you can tell that it's at the end of the season. You know, suits are going to be worn. People are going to win awards, which is fantastic. So the nominees came out. I looked at the categories and I thought to myself, okay, there's some that I agree with and there's some that I'm going to put myself there. So we're going to play a little bit of a game. So I will show you the nominees and then I will tell you if I agree or I don't. And I would put the names that I would have put within that category. And then I will mention who I think is going to win that award. Let's get started. Let's start off with the DSTV Disky Challenge nominees. So we've got Mduduzi Chaulala of KZ Chiefs and we've got Buitu Melo. Radio Pane of Orlando Pirates. Um, I think I would say I agree with these nominees. And to be fair, I'll also be honest with the audience and say that I have not been watching as much Disky Challenge that I would like to watch. But when you see a player who scored 24 goals in 27 games, I think it's I think I think it speaks for itself, the numbers. And I think he's going to be walking away with that award. The next award is the MTN8 Last Man Standing. They've got Jali, Ralani, and Shalile, as you can see on the screen. Strangely enough, I was thinking which other player could I put in and it was so hard to think of a player. I just thought, okay, I'd probably agree with this, but I just feel hard done by, by Terence Machero because I thought he was also sublime and he also scored that brilliant goal against Amazulu within that game. And I think the winner for me within that category, I'd have to say it's going to Ralani. Yeah. I'm going with Rally. Four games, two goals, one assist. I think he was very crucial with Cape Town City making it to the final. So that's my last man standing. Netbank Cup. That's the next one. Most promising player now. Now we've seen a lot of youngsters make their name within this tournament. And as you can see, the nominees that they've put up is Keegan Allen, uh, Piwa of Tux, and as well as Mfundo Tikazi. And I have to say, I was thinking to myself because I thought Keegan Allen was a solid centre-back playing I thought Piwa as well, just moving the ball around for Tux as well. Um, got a bright future within that kid. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tikazi. I think he played a crucial role with uh, Roy Lamb's run and being at the back as well. You even saw him against Mamluri Sundowns last night with the game that he played. I thought he was really brilliant. And for me, I would have to say he walks away with the most promising player of the NetBank Cup. The next one is the NetBank play of the tournament now. Now this factors in all the players because most promising player looks at the youngsters you would say but this one factors in all the players and the nominees they had was Jali, Mudiba and as well as King Nglovu. Um, you might be surprised why King Nglovu was there but he actually kept the number of clean sheets for Maruma Gallant's making it to the final. I put a twist on it and these are the names I think deserve a nomination. Jali stays as you can see on screen but there's a change. Mudiba out and King Nglovu stays and last but not least I would say Seed Dion comes in of Maruma Gallant's four games and three goals. I think he definitely deserves a nomination. But we're going to stick with the nominees that they have. And I think the person who's going to win it for me with that one, I would have to say, is Anle Jali. DST Premiership now. Leaving all the cups now. This is within the league now. The goalkeeper of the season. The nominees that they had was Hugo Mox of Cape Town City. Tostan Sabata of Sekukune and as well as Veli Moto of Amazulu, of course. I mean, there's one thing I must mention with regards to this um, category is the fact that Denis Oyangwe deserves a mention, guys. I mean, he's played 16 games and kept 11 clean sheets. 
but he just did not play enough games because when you look at the three that were nominated, they played more than 20 games throughout the, the, the season. So I would understand those nominations. So for me, the goalkeeper who walks away with this one, I would have to say Hugo Marks of Cape Town City, who's come in, been a revelation and been a breath of fresh air as well. And I think also the injury that happened to Darren, Darren Keat, he's been able to take that opportunity and been able to be such a solid goalkeeper. 15 clean sheets within the league so far. So for me, he is my goalkeeper of the season. Defender of the season. This is within the league. We must remind everyone, this is within the league. This is not all the competitions within the league. And the three nominees that they have was Grant Kikana, they got Lal Lakay, and as well as they got Tamim Kize of Cape Town City. So I looked at those and I thought, I'm going to switch it up quite a bit because based on me, Sheikh Srampedi, who are your nominees for Defender of the Season? Fasika of Cape Town City deserves a mention. That's number one. Lal Lakay. He would stay in there. I wanted to put in Russian Daruk, but I think the logic was not putting him in is because of the number of games he had played. I don't think he had played enough. And then moving on to the next, Olisanda. I think Olisanda has been a threat of fresh air as well. I think he is one of the best center backs within the league. He's so calm and he's just been able to help Orlando Price pick up the clean sheets as well. Those are the three I would have put up. But now with the three that they've given us, I'm going to have to say the winner is Lala K of Mamluri Sanand. Midfielder of the season now. Three names, Anil Jali of Mamluri Sanand. And then we also got Temba's one of Mamluri Sanand. And we got him Dansane of Cape Town City. Now, again, I've put a twist. Sheikh Swampedi, who would you have nominated for midfield of the season? Anil Jali stays for me. I would have to say Temba's one stays for me. But if we're going to put Temba's one, I think Villiat deserves a shout. Seven goals, eight assists. I think he deserves a shout. The number of goal involvements that he's had for Kids of Chiefs, if you take those away, I think Kids of Chiefs fall even further down the league. So those are the three I would have put up. But with the three that they've given us, I think Anil Jali, standout winner. There's no one within that position that he plays is much better than him, no doubt. Young player of the season now. Now this is where the excitement goes in because you see young players that are being introduced within the league. The names that they've given us is Mkaba of Stellenbosch. You got Pepra of Orlando Pirates and Luke Fleurs of Supersport United. I think Supersport fully deserved that purely because of the youngsters that they've given chances to. I'm going to put another twist. Guys, I'm going to put another twist. You know, these are Sheikh's young player of the season nominees. Mkaba stays for me. I think he's been brilliant getting a Bafana Bafana nomination. I'd also have to say Jabbar of Stellenbosch. And he's played 27 league games, you know? I, I, a player who is 19 years old, I think he definitely deserves a shout. And arguably the best young player within the league for me. And I would say Luke Fleur stays. I mean, I almost wanted to add Keegan Johannesson as well as Njablo Blom. I think Njablo Blom also deserves a shout as well. And Tikazi as well of Royal AM. But of the three that they have given us, I would have to say Kaba wins it for me. Now we're getting to the big awards now. The players play of the season now. And Sanon's dominate the nominations with Anle Jali, Peter Shaolile, and as well as Temba Zwane. I was thinking, what would I change it with? I'd have to probably say I agree with the players in terms of who they have nominated here. But with the players that are here, people will say Peter Shaolile. And I think because of the goals that he scored, of course, he got one again um, yesterday with the guys playing Royal AM. And picking him up to 23 goals, he can't get anything more than that. And I think it's great to have a player who's scoring the goals. But I just look at Anil Jali, man. And th there's no one for me who has been as consistent as he has been within that position. And I don't expect him to score many goals. But just he contributes to Sundowns' clean sheets and them not being able to concede goals. And for me, he's my player's player of the season. Now we move over to the coaches now. Coaches... You get a lot of praise. I think there's been a lot of coaches who stood up this season, who've been able to have great seasons. So they put in three names that were there. John Maduka, you've seen the good work that he's done with Royal AM, can still qualify for CAF football. And then you've got Rulani and as well as Mangoba as well. Just in what they've done at Mamluri Sanos, winning the league as well. And Eric Tinkler is the last nomination. I agree with these, considering what these clubs have been able to do, Cape Town City, Royal AM, and as well as Sundowns going on to win it. But I also want to give honorable mentions as well to Steve Barker, what he's done with Stellenbosch, brilliant work, uh, Makubedu of Sekukune United. I think he's done brilliant work. I know he hasn't had a great 2022 
year in terms of how they've played within the league. But I think he deserves a shout because of he easily avoided relegation regardless of them being their first season within, within the DSC Premiership. And then Dan Malicella, just what he's done with Maru Magellan since he's come in and taking them as well to a final as well. I just think he's done really well. Um, also within the league, almost pushing them within the top eight place from when they were in the relegation spot. So my coaches of the season is Rulani and Mangova, just for the great work that they've done. And I think they deserve praise as well. And if we're being honest, they practically won this league three months ago. So that's, those are my winners for coaches of the season. And then the big one. This is the big one, the big fish, the biggest one. It's the football of the season. They've put in three names, Anle Jali, Shalulile, and Letswalo as well. Uh, Letswalo, considering the club that he plays for, you know, I don't think they create, Royal M creates as many chances as Mamluri Sanna. So for him to have gotten 15 goals, I think it deserves him a lot of praise. Um, my football of the season, I want to say Shalulile, I really do. And I think a lot of people are going to say Shalulile, but... Again, Andre Jali takes it for me. I, the most consistent player within the league, honestly, the most consistent player within the league. I think with Charlie, it's the number looks great, and I, I'm glad we have someone scoring goals. I'll say that again. Who scored twenty something goals within the league? We haven't had that in a long time. Um, but there were spurts that Charlie had where he had droughts, and I think that's why I stand with Andre Jali and the position that he plays, being that anchor as well. For me, my football of the season, Anle Jali. So it's that time again for bet of the week. Now, bet of the week is where I give you my bet slip. Hopefully it lights in green. And hopefully yours lights in green too. And I'll do that on a weekly consistent basis. And always remember that you can place your bets at betway.co.za. So last week, I missed out on one. I missed out on one. I got all my selections right. But just the one game, it was the Chelsea against Leicester game. I said over 2.5, only two goals were scored. And two were scored very early. And there's a part of me that said cash out. But I didn't because I was hoping a goal would go in. But I'm not going to make that mistake again. If a cash out option is available, guys, take it. So for this week, we're focusing on European finals. The first one being the Europa Conference League. Roma going up against Feyenoord. I think for me, Jose Mourinho... Is going to walk into that final with his team, with Tammy Abraham, who's scoring a lot of goals. And I think Roma's going to win that one. The next one being the UEFA Champions League finals, the big one. Liverpool going up against Real Madrid. Tough one to call. You can't write down what Real Madrid have done. Liverpool, on the same hand, are such a strong team. But I think both teams will score is definitely on the cards. Now, the next game, it's not priced as yet. But it's the NetBank Cup final, which is Sundowns going up against Maru McCallens. And I would say Sundowns to win that game. But here's the juicy part about it. Just without the Sundowns game just yet, my odds are standing at 3.68. So just imagine if I add the Sundowns game once it's priced on the Betway site. Those odds are going to be looking very nice. So those are the three games I'm going to go with up until Sundowns gets priced. And I will add it onto the bet slip as well. Good luck with your bets. Hoping that minds win. Don't forget to place your bets at betway.co.za. The end of the show has come. You sort of wonder sometimes where in the world has the time gone. But just before I go, just want to tell you something. Signing bonus of over 5 billion rands. Annually after tax, over 1.6 billion rands. Weekly. 19.7 million rands. Kylian Mbappe. Sheesh. That's the contract that he signed. I saw those numbers and I thought to myself, I gave up on my football career way too soon. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so that you're notified for future episodes. See you next week.